With hard times, even law and order in America seemed threatened. If you needed proof, it was pretty boy Floyd. If you gather round me children, a story I will tell. Pretty boy Floyd an outlaw. Oklahoma knew him well. He was an outlaw, a robber, and a killer. But in Depression America, Charles Pretty Boy Floyd became a kind of hero, celebrated in movies and song for helping the poor. It was in Oklahoma City. It was on a Christmas day. I come a whole carload of groceries with a letter that did say. Well, you say that I'm an outlaw, you say that I'm a thief. Here's Christmas dinner for the families on relief. My father was uh, with, with my mother and I when I was born. But after that, uh, it was only about a year, I think, after that he was put in prison. And the first time I ever saw him, I was probably about five, maybe five and a half years old. He impressed me because he was so well-dressed and he looked so nice and everything, you know, I thought he looked like a movie star. They called Floyd the sagebrush Robin Hood because he generously rewarded those who helped him escape the law, all part of the desperation of hard times. There was a lot of stealing, you know, steal someone's hogs and butcher them. And so there was a lot of uh, that sort of thing going on because of people being hungry. And of course, I think a lot of that was overlooked by the uh, enforcement authorities because they realized it was a matter of person eating. Floyd was the son of tenant farmers who had struggled to escape poverty and debt. At age 20, he turned his back on farm life, robbed a St. Louis grocery store payroll, was caught, and spent three and a half years in the Missouri penitentiary. Released in 1929, Floyd found a rural economy that was falling apart. Seven cent cotton and a 40 cent meat. How in the world can a poor man eat? Flour up high and cotton down low. How in the world can we raise the dough? Clothes worn out. Whole families had to work just to survive. Now it's through this world I ramble. I see lots of funny men. Some will rob you with a six gun. Some with a fountain pen. Well, they needed a hero about that. You know, the banks were uh, on farms and everything. And I think that uh, the people felt that my father was just uh, one of them uh, kind of striking back for all of them. From 1929 to 1931, as the economic crisis deepened, bank robberies increased dramatically. There had been so many bank robberies around that it was quite often that a customer would come in and happened to have my back to the counter at the moment. And this fellow hollered, this is a holdup. And I said, oh, yeah. Turned around, and sure enough, the gun was right in my face. Most of them were small robberies by by that I mean they was some small banks and uh, of course it was kind of a disgrace to get robbed by anybody except a pretty boy Floyd. Floyd was a wanted man in states across America's farm belt. But in the small towns where he robbed banks, farmers talked to Floyd tearing up mortgages and giving money to the poor. Charles Pretty Boy Floyd was becoming a legend. There's a many a starving farmers, the same old story told, how this outlaw paid their mortgage and saved their little home. Charlie came to our house. Now, this is my first remembrance of him. He came to our house and mother was telling him about a family that lived out the edge of town. Mother said, well, this family out there really needs some help. 
you know, the kids don't even have shoes to go to school. And he said, well, why don't, let's get some groceries. Her mother said that. They agreed together they were going to get groceries. So they, mother said, well, Ruth knows the way. I crawled in there and showed Charlie how to go out to their farmhouse. So Charlie gets out of the car and puts the basket of groceries on the porch. And then he gave me a bill and put it in my hand. And he said, Dink, I was tiny then, he called me Dinky. But he said, Dink, give this man this bill and tell him to buy his children some shoes. Pretty boy Floyd and outlaw. Oklahoma knew him well. Floyd was frankly a little smarter than most of the average bank robbers to where he would uh, move out of the one area and he would hit maybe a hundred miles away. In 1931, pretty boy Floyd embarked on a robbing spree that took him from Oklahoma through Missouri east to Ohio and then home to Oklahoma where Floyd knew that for a few dollars a poor farm family would gladly hide him out. In five months, Floyd stole more than $12,000. We'd hear about Pretty Boy Floyd, and there were some other outlaws. I can't think of their names now. Most of we had to talk about, we talk about that kind of stuff, you know, <laughs> get a lot of fun out of it. They'd follow his escapades in the paper, you know, and it was kind of like uh, they, they were pulling for him to stay at large instead of being killed. Depression America was fascinated by the underworld. Outlaws and gangsters on the screen and on the streets seemed unstoppable. In Oklahoma, which led the nation in bank robberies in 1932, officials appealed to the citizens to turn in pretty boy Floyd, who was accused of six killings and ten robberies. He really didn't spend all that money that he robbed. To him, I think it began to be a game in the beginning, and then it got more serious, you know. In early 1932, Oklahoma bankers intensified efforts to capture Floyd. They hired Irv Kelly, a retired sheriff, to lead the manhunt. Floyd's wife had moved down to live with her parents, and the telephone operator let my father know that Floyd, and Floyd had told her he was coming, and that was the uh, way that they were able to set up the trap. It was in nighttime, and Irv Kelly and some more people were staked out, and in those days, he had gates to keep the stock in, and somebody had to stop and open the gate to go into where we live. We live back in the field. Along about 2 o'clock in the morning, it got quite cold. And the fellows at this one end of the road that they thought Floyd would come in decided to go into Bigsby, which was two miles, and get some coffee. While all of this was transpiring, Floyd came in through this uh, place where these officers had left. And so my father got out to open the gate, and Irv Kelly stepped out from behind the chicken house. My dad could not be positive that it was Floyd because those officers would have given him a signal if Floyd came through and they were to come up and block, you know, the thing off. So uh, when Floyd, they came up to open the gate and my dad stepped out, then the gun battle started and my dad was killed. <laughs> The killing turned the public against the outlaw pretty boy Floyd. We just heard about it. We don't ever know him coming in here doing anything for anybody in this area. We would just hear about it. They call him a kind of Robin Hood. It's nice to be a Robin Hood, I'm sure. But if you come and take my bread when I need it to eat and go give it to somebody else, you're not a Robin Hood to me. Floyd would remain at large for two more years until FBI agents cornered and shot him in an Ohio cornfield. But the crime wave of the early Depression years continued to feed fears that America 
was coming apart. Oh my God, God. 